I charge you this day to be the man that makes the title. But it's difficult to find my voice. I charge you to find the rule book and burn it. And we all have a unique voice. Even, even if it's in the norm, it's still unique. It's still different. Seek the status quo and surpass it. The worst thing about being a pastor is some folk ain't gonna like you. <laughs> you gotta deal with it every step you should accept. What else? What else have we got in this way? Reach for the low-hanging fruit, then exceed it. I charge you to humbly and soberly remember that your grandparents and mine could never have been the Peachtree Associate Professor of Evangelism and Church Growth. You stand today on their very proud shoulders and on the very ground that was enriched by our poor parents' blood and sweat. Come on, give Dr. Watkins a round of applause. Let me, uh, let me start off with this scripture, Genesis chapter 1, verses 3 through 4. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light was good, and God separated light from darkness. Because photo literally means light. Photography means writing with light. Isn't it interesting? The first thing God does is God gives with this thing called light. And so we're going to talk today just for a little while, being the church in the visual age, being the church in the visual age, using the light to share the light. Well, for me, when I was teaching at Fuller Seminary in the early 2000s, I realized that we're moving into the visual age. And being in Hollywood and just being a consumer of film and a love of photography, I realized there was a need to learn a new way to communicate. Because we're living in an age where people are using moving and still images via YouTube, Facebook, and then of course Instagram, and back in those days in MySpace. And I realized there was a need to learn this new language that we were going to effectively communicate with this next generation. And so I fully embraced it. This is the future church. This is the church. This is the future. And we have to decide, are we going to learn the language they're speaking? Do we love them enough to change in such a way that we can effectively share the gospel of Jesus Christ with this generation? We're living in the visual age. We're living in an age where the dominant form of communication is moving and it's still images. The average person spends four hours a day on their phone, tablet, or laptop engaging still and moving images. I went to see a movie entitled Inconvenient Truth, and it starred none other than Al Gore, you know, the former presidential candidate, who was once the most boring speaker in the world. And I saw in that movie Al Gore's ability to become one of the most interesting, exciting speakers in the world. I went to that movie knowing very little about global warming, but I left that movie riding my bike and committed to loving the planet because he was so convinced and communicated with me then I realized that Nancy Duarte, she prepared that presentation for him. I bought her book, Slideology. I went down and took her course about communicating visually, and then I was sold, and my journey began. And then, of course, went back to school to get a Master's of Fine Arts in Photography and Videography from Savannah College of Art and Design, and I committed myself to learning this language, to communicating in the visual age, so that we may use the light to share the light to change the world. Creator God, Redeemer God, Sustainer God, bless your servant and our colleague in ministry, Reverend Dr. Ralph Azu Watkins. Consecrate him and his work as the Peachtree Associate Professor of Evangelism and Church Growth. In the name of Jesus Christ, the darker brother, receive our prayer. And let this gathering of the people of God say, Amen. Amen. I think we're in a great place in the life of the church. The future of ministry, we are in good hands and we will embrace the change. We're living in a much different world. When I first started my first church, I had a, had a beeper. Then I had a car phone that was attached to my actual car. 
And now, well, it's this trusty iPhone. The world has changed dramatically. But what God has blessed us with is these wonderful, powerful tools to communicate with. We have the ability to touch the world through Facebook and Instagram and YouTube and Twitter and the World Wide Web and mobile technology. And I'm super excited about the future. And I'm committed to preparing leaders to lead in this present age, to use these tools to shine light on injustice, but also to shed light on the ways God's moving in this world to make this world a more just place. So I think we're in a sound place. I think we at Columbia are committed to preparing leaders for the future. I know the church that I pastor, that's what we're doing. We're taking an historic church and we're making that church the church of the future while not forgetting its past. We're not writing a new book. We're simply writing the next chapter. We're drawing the next picture. We're painting the next portrait. We're taking the next step shot. We're making the next movie. We're developing the next documentary. I think that's the future of ministry. And I think both We Street Baptist Church and Columbia Seminary are firmly planted in that future. And we're preparing leaders to lead in this present age. So some call me the scholar with the camera, but that's really a misnomer. Because I see myself as a pastor, a professor, a photographer, a documentarian, a storyteller. But in the end, I'm Ralph Watkins. I'm the one God's created to do the work God's uniquely crafted and created me to do in this present age. So these things really roll up into one where some said to me, you have to choose. You have to either be a pastor or a professor or a photographer. I never bought that argument. I believe when God deposits gifts in you, you are obligated to use those gifts for the glory of God. And I encourage you to not allow anybody to typecast you, to pigeonhole you, or to limit you. Honor what God has placed in you and be the very unique you that God has called you to be.